For more than 15 years, scientist Robert Roser has searched for the elusive Higgs boson. The Higgs boson is a hypothetical particle that we believe exists to fix a flaw in the standard model. The standard model to us is uh, our description, a mathematical description of how the universe works. The, the a significant flaw in that model is it doesn't explain mass. The discovery of the Higgs boson, known to many as the God particle, could give scientists the answers they seek to many of the biggest questions known to man. We're asking the question of how the universe works and why does it, uh, why is it built the, the way it's built. To find the Higgs boson at Fermilab, scientists use the Tevatron accelerator to slam protons and antiprotons together. In the stream of data that follows, scientists look for clues that the Higgs boson exists. So far, they haven't found any such clues, but Roser says they may have found something else. As we look at these huge data sets that we've acquired over the 10 years, we're now putting out things we learned about that data, and so you're seeing, you know, you're seeing here a evidence for a, perhaps a new particle, and, and there'll be other things that will come out over the coming months with, uh, that also will be perhaps just as interesting as this. The discovery of what could be a previously unknown subatomic particle could also be the last major accomplishment of the Tevatron. All good things come to an end, and uh, this will be the end for the Tevatron. It's had a glorious career, 25 years, which is very long in the accelerator field. Pierre Odone is the director of Fermilab. He says the funding needed to continue research to find the Higgs boson, if it exists at all, exceeds Fermilab's $400 million annual budget. But it's one-third the budget of the laboratory in Geneva, Switzerland. The CERN laboratory in Geneva is home to the Large Hadron Collider. Built in collaboration with Fermilab, it is a more powerful device than the Tevatron accelerator. When the Tevatron goes offline later this year, the focus in this area of physics will finally move from the United States to Europe. In this last two decades, that has shifted where the, uh, the facility in Geneva went ahead and built this formidable machine that we were trying to build in Texas called the Superconducting Super Collider. We cl closed ours, but the Europeans went ahead with theirs, and that's what has led to this differentiation now in the level of funding of these two laboratories. Even though Fermilab stands to lose some prestige when the Tevatron shuts down, scientists say the U.S. will still be well represented in the field of particle physics. Since the Tevatron began colliding, Robert Roser says it has been an international effort, and it will continue to be one as the search goes on in Geneva. There's 15 nations are participating on this experiment. Roughly 300 of the 600 collaborators in this experiment are from non-U.S. institutions. So it's, it's very much a large multinational or international uh, collaboration. I mean, all big science is these days. After the Tevatron goes offline, it will continue to play a role at Fermilab. Engineers plan to open previously inaccessible segments of the collider tunnel where they will display part of the accelerator and detectors in an exhibit the public will be able to visit. Kane Fairbaugh, VOA News, Batavia, Illinois.